Welcome to our lecture online. Now this particular problem we've seen in the previous video, but now we're going to try to solve it in perhaps an easier, faster way. By recognizing the symmetry in the problem. So the problem states that the figure shows a circuit having eight resistances of one ohm each labeled R1 through R8 and two ideal batteries with voltages V1 equals 12 volts and V2 equals 6 volts. Which of the following statement or statements is or are correct? And there's four statements given to represent four currents. One current through R1, one current through R2, which is right here, one current through R3, which is here, and one current through R5, which is here. So, are those statements correct? Let's find out. But since we see a symmetry there, what we could do is we could simply take this circuit and fold it onto itself. So when we do that, we get the following we get a circuit that looks like this with just one resistor here, one resistor there, like this. Then here we still have the battery with one resistor and the battery with one resistor. And now we have one single resistor here. Now notice since we folded them onto one another, so essentially we took two parallel branches and turned into one branch. So that means that the resistance in each of these branches is a half ohm. So half ohm resistor, half ohm resistor, and a half ohm resistor instead of a full ohm resistor. Here this is still one ohm, one ohm, and this is still 12 volts, and this is still 6 volts. Now, based upon this, let's create some currents. So let's see here, we can call this current I1, we'll call this current I2, we call this current I3, and notice that this is also I2 because there's no other place to go, and then this must also be I1. So right away by drawing the circuit like this, we've now reduced it to simply three currents. I guess I'll make I3 go this way. And so instead of solving for five unknowns in the previous video, we only need to solve for three unknowns. So using Kirchhoff's current rule, let's see what we can do. Picking this junction right here, we can see that I1 enters and I3 and I2 leave. So we can say that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. And at this junction, we can see that we have two currents entering and one current leaving. Here we can see that I2 plus I3 equals I1. Now, what that's going to do, I2 plus I3 equals I1, but I believe that these will be one and the same circuit, I mean, one and the same equations. Sure enough, same, so that didn't gain us anything. We could just only get one of those equations to be useful, and we'll use that to reduce the other equations. Now we need two voltage equations, so we'll call this loop one, and loop two will go around it in a clockwise direction, starting from this point right here. So we have a voltage drop, so we have minus I2. So this is equation number one. So I have minus I2, that's the current times the resistance gives me the voltage drop. The resistance here is one, plus six volts. Here we have a voltage drop of a half times I2, so that would be minus a half I2. And then here we have a voltage rise because we go against the current. So in that case, that would be plus half I3. And that adds up to zero as a goal way around the circuit. Simplifying that one a little bit, notice we can multiply everything by two to get rid of the fractions. That is minus two I2 plus 12 minus I2 uh, plus I3 equals zero. And that means I can write this as uh, minus 3i2 plus i3 equals minus 12. So there's a second equation. We have one equation, second equation. Now we need a third equation because we have three unknowns. So equation number two can be found by going around this loop. Starting at the branch point, we have voltage drop minus one half times i3. Here we have a voltage rise. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, voltage drop because we go with the current. So that would be minus one half times I1. Here we have a voltage drop that we have minus I1. And then we have a voltage rise of plus 12 volts and that adds up to zero. Multiplying everything by two again, we have minus I3, minus I1, minus two I1, 
plus 24 equals 0. And so we have minus 3i1 minus i3 equals minus 24. Again, rid of all the negative signs, we have 3i1 plus i3 equals positive 24. And there's our third equation. So now we need to get rid of one of the variables. Uh, so perhaps I get rid of i1 and leave me i2 and i3. So i1 is equal to this. So that, me, that gives me 3i2 plus 3i3, simply replacing i1 by i2 and i3, plus i3 equals 24. So in other words, we have 3i2 plus 4i3 equals 24. So now I have this equation and I have this equation where I only have two equations, the two unknowns, i2 and i3. Notice when I add the two together, I eliminate i2. So I'm going to add these together. So these two and add. So minus 3i2 plus 3i2, I get 0. i3 plus 4i3, I get plus 5i3 equals 24 minus 12, which is 12. That means that i3 is equal to 12 divided by 5, which would be 2.4 amps. Now, is that one of the currents in our problem? So I3 is this current. Hmm. But it's going through that ohm. So notice that since it's folded double, I get half the resistance, which gives me twice the current. So if I relate that to this current right here, this current, whatever you want to call that, let's call that um, I through R2, that current is going to be half of this current. The reason again is notice that here I have a half ohm resistor, there I have a full ohm resistor. Whatever the current here is, I get twice resistance, half the current. That means the current through R2 is going to be half the current through I3. So from that I can conclude that this current, this would be I through R2, is equal to half of 2.4, which is 1.2 amps. And notice, that's what this says, R2 is 1.2 amps, so therefore we know that this is correct. Now that I know what I3 is, I can calculate I2. And let's see here, which would be the best? I'll just go with this one. So I go 3I2 plus 4, 2.4, I3, 2.4 is equal to 24. Oh, did I do that right? 3, I2 plus 4, I3, which is 2.4, equals 24. That's right. Okay, 24. So, I have 3, I2 is equal to 24 minus 9.6. So, we need 3, I2 is equal to uh, 14 plus 0.4, that would be 14.4, so I2 is equal to one-third of that, uh, 4.8, 4.8 amps. All right, so let's go over here and see what I2 is. I2 is this current through this resistor right here. That's the same as this current. And that would be I through R3, and that is equal to 4.8 amps. And coming up here, current through R3 is 4.8 amps, that's what I got, so that means that this is correct as well. So far, so good. All right, so I got R2, let's see, I got our I2, I got I3, now I need I1. And I1 is the sum of the two. So I1 is I2 plus I3. And I2 is 4.8 plus I3, which is 2.4, which is equal to 7.2 I1 amps. So my I1 is this current right here, which is the same as this current right here, which is the current I through R1. And we found that to be 7.2 amps. Coming up here, current through R1 is 7.2 amps, so that is correct as well. Okay. Now I need the current flowing through R5. 
which is the same as the current flowing through R6 because that's perfect symmetry. So that means that whatever the current is here, I should have half the current. Let's see. That's right. So this will be the current through R5, I through R5, must be two times this current right here, I2. How do I know that? Well, because here I have a half ohm resistor and there I have a full ohm resistor. Double the resistance means ooh, half the current. Got to be careful here. Let's do that again. So the current through here needs to be half the current through here. Why do we know that? Here we have half the current, half the resistance, so double the current, double the resistance, so half the current. So I2 is 4.8 amps. That means that I through R5 is half of that, half of 4.8, which is 2.4 amps. And so I through R5 is 2.4 amps, which is what we have there. And therefore, yes. We again found all four of the answers to be correct. You gotta be careful when you go back and forth that the currents here are not the same as the currents there in the parts that were folded over. It is true here because nothing has changed between these two branches. But these branches here, this one, this one, and this one, is actually the duplicate or this one folded over. That means we have half the resistance and twice the current in this circuit, so we have to divide the current by two to get the current in here. And that's when we do that, we actually get all four of the answers. And that is how it's done. Now, which of these methods was faster and easier? Well, notice that if you use this method, you kind of have to draw this again. Mm, I think it takes about the same amount of time, like whatever method you prefer. Actually, it'd be interesting to see when you see this video and the previous video, which of the two methods do you like best? True enough, here we only have three unknowns, three equations, three unknowns. The other one had five equations, five unknowns, but you didn't have to draw all of these um, didn't have to redraw the circuit and work with it. So let me know which one you like better. This one's a little false, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, not necessarily faster.